Welcome, everyone, to our Week 11 Football Officials Educational Video Series for the 2024 football season. Thanks, everyone, who's taken the time to watch previous week's videos. Hit the like button, hit the share button, uh, subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. All right, as we get into Week 11, as uh, playoffs are a little more than a week away here in North Carolina, we've got several uh, free kick or kickoff plays that we're going to talk about this week. So let's get into our first plays for Week 11. First free take play here, we're going to talk about formation, and we know under Rule 6-1, Article 3B, no K players other than the kicker, maybe more than five yards behind the kicking team's free kick line. A player satisfies this rule when no foot is on or beyond the five yards behind the free kick line. If one K player is more than five yards behind the restraining line, and any other player kicks the ball, it is a foul. So we can see right here inside the circles, we have two players, one with a foot and the other one looks completely behind the line. Uh, back judges, take yourself a little preventive officiating here. Go ahead and get back there. Tell these players they need to move up so we can make this formation legal. Um, with the ball being kicked off at the 40, they need to all be in front of the 35, except for the kicker who can be more than five yards. So back judges, take the time to go back there, tell them to move up. Now, as we have this kick, we can see this kick goes out of bounds right here. looks like somewhere around the 34, 35-yard line. I think if you put this ball on the 35-yard line uh, and forced it from there, that would be fine as close as this is because of our angle of the camera. But uh, another thing here is we can see the ball go out of bounds. When we come down, we're going to see the officials uh, drop their penalty marker on the ground. That's great. But let's go ahead and move the penalty markers if we have two of them. Let's go ahead and move them to the 35 because they eventually walk this penalty off five yards from that spot. Let's go ahead and move them to the 35 so it's the proper spot. You pick the flag up, move it with your hand, or you come down and drop it at the spot. Remember, when a free kick goes out of bounds, uh, the receiving team has options. They can accept the five-yard penalty from the previous spot and re-kick, or they can take the five-yard penalty from the seeing spot or put the ball in play 25 yards in advance of the previous spot. Or they can decline the penalty altogether and take the ball at the inbound spot. So in this play, the coach chose the option to enforce five yards from where the ball went out of bounds at, which was uh, the 35-yard line, added five yards, and put the ball in play at the 40. A uh, little tip here, make sure we move our flags to the 35 if that's where we're going to force the penalty from. So bend over, pick the flag up, I'll place it on the 35, and walk the penalty off from there. Or come down to the spot and drop the flag right on the 35. Uh, just makes everything look better, makes the crew look more credible. So keep those things in mind so that we get our penalty markers at the proper enforcement spot so we can get proper enforcement of the penalty. Next play here is another kickoff, and we're going to look at an onside kick. And these plays, this is in the second quarter, not an ordinary where you'd see an onside kick. And these are difficult plays to officiate in a five-person crew mechanic because it's challenging because of the number of of officials up on those lines. And so we look at rule 6-1, article 6, which states any K player may recover a free kick if it is both touched the ground and goes beyond the plane of R's free kick line. Those two requirements can occur in any order. So we come back to this play and we're going to see here, I'm going to have highlighted inside the red circle in a minute. You can see the ball go beyond R's receiving line. So it went to 10 yards, it hits the ground, and then it bounces back where a K player recovers it. So when the ball gets spotted here, we're going to see the ball spotted on K's side of the 50-yard line. And so the coach questions is, you know, how can this be recovered by K because the ball didn't go 10 yards because to him it doesn't look like it went 10 yards because maybe he didn't see it. So this is where we need to communicate across the field. We need to communicate to the official to the other side so we can communicate to that coach. Coach, you are correct. The ball is spotted on the 50-yard line, but the ball went the required 10 yards. It bounced over the 50, and then it bounced back. So it met met the requirement of going past R's receiving line, and it was grounded. It met those two requirements. And so we have a legal kick and a legal recovery. Let's communicate that information across the field of those officials, and that way we can do some preventive officiating with the coach when the co coach questions this, and then we just say, well, that's the spot. We're better off to communicate that information across the field to get that to the coach. That communication can help prevent the coach from thinking that, you know, the ball didn't meet the requirements and we're just spotting it at that 50 yard line and maybe, you know, questioning if we know the rule or not. But as you can clearly see here, the ball touches over the 50 and bounces back and recovered. So we have a legal recovery by K on this play. Communicate that information across the field, communicate it to the coach, and that can help prevent some of our problems. 
So I hear the ball's at the three-yard line going in. So we know at the snap that our wing officials, line judge, head line, are going to move to the goal line and officiate the play. So just one little tip here. The line judge is a good position, but if you move back some, it will give you a little bit more room, a little bit more space, uh, help with your safety. You have the room. So go ahead and move back to where I've put, inserted the little official here, um, cartoon pick. Make sure you move back a little bit just to give yourself a little bit more room for your safety and so the ball doesn't end up on your lap. Um, as I said, we're going to move to the goal line and you're going to see the official here once the ball is snapped. Does a good job of starting to work his way to the goal line and then coming back and officiating the end of the run on this play. So, wing officials, you know, our goal line will be our priority on this play. We'll start to work our way and then we'll come back to the play. And then after the play comes to an end here, we're going to see a good job here by all officials. We see the line judge, referee, and the umpire, and even the back judge coming in, closing down on the play, uh, cleaning up, doing preventing officiating, good dead ball officiating here. Um, you can see the umpire came from, you know, in the end zone over to help clean up. As you backtrack it here, we can see where the umpire was back deep in the end zone. Comes in on this play to help clean things up, help prevent officiating. This is what we need to do on on plays. Uh, come in, make ourselves our presence felt, and this will help in preventive officiating and to clean things up so that we can prevent problems. Good job here on the play. So we're going to spend some time on this play. This is a kickoff, and it's a really good play. We're going to make some assumptions along the way or play some scenarios out on this particular play. So we have a free kick here, kickoff, and we're going to focus on the player inside the goal. The ball is going to go down, and it's it's going to be very near to the goal line in this play, as you can see right here. So we know under Rule 4, 4, uh, 2D, which states that it's a dead ball if this ball is a kick and it breaks the goal line. So if any part of that ball breaks that goal line, we're going to have a touchback because it's a, if it's a free kick that broke the goal line. Now, you have to judge whether it was the you know the kick that broke the goal line or did the player uh, carry it in with the momentum section. We'll get into that in a second. So the referee in this case is in great position. Our camera angle is from the 50-yard line, so it's really difficult for us to look at this from this angle and you know put a lot of question into the referee's decision-making here or judgment because of our angle. But let's break this play down and make some assumptions on this so that we can look at the other scenarios because of where this ball is located as in relevance to the goal line and the five-yard line. So we can see right here that the referee gives it a touchback. Now, Let's switch this around. Let's say that we judge that this R player, the R player, caught the ball before going, the ball broke the goal line. So, rule eight, five, article two, under the exception states, R player catches or recovers a scrimmage kick or free kick in this case between the five yard line and the goal line. And his original momentum carries him into the end zone where the ball remains in the end zone. And is declared dead in the end zone in his team possession, or it goes out of bounds in the end zone. The ball belongs to team possession of the spot where the kick was caught or recovered, which means we need to have a beanbag down if we judge on this play that this receiving player caught the ball in the field of play and then carried the ball into the end zone. We would have a beanbag down to mark that spot so that we can place the ball at that spot, whether it be the one or two yard line. Now, if this ball is really close to the goal line, let's not spot it inches outside the goal line. We're going to give a touchback. But if we judge this ball, let's say, let's just in this scenario, say we judge that this player caught this ball at the two-yard line and then carried it in. That would be a momentum exception. The mechanics here would be for the referee to place a beanbag at the two-yard line, and then this would be a live ball. Now, if we declared it dead in the end zone or the player went down in the end zone, we're going to move that ball back out to the two-yard line on this play if that's the scenario that played out. Again, I want to reemphasize, the referee is in great position here. We're at the 50-yard line, making some assumptions on this play so that we can roll out some scenarios so that we can learn from this play. So you have to be on the goal line like the referee is to be able to judge. Is it the kick that breaks the goal line, or does the receiving player gain possession in the field of play and then carry the ball with his momentum. Does his momentum carry him in to the end zone? And remember, momentum exception only applies 
on a ball in this situation between the goal line and the five yard line. So when does the kick end gains when the receiver gains possession? And as we can see here, where does he gain possession? Potentially, is it there or is it still a kick? When does he gain possession? The referee, like I said, is in great position on the goal line. But if we deem that this R player gained possession in the field of play, at, let's say again, like I said, the two yard line or so, we're going to put a bean bag down and mark it at that spot. This play here is really good situational awareness of the officials on the field. We're going to see over there, have highlighted inside a circle, it's a fourth down play. So we know by high school rule, one of two things. We're either going to have a first down gained by the offense, which means we have a clock stoppage to move the chains, or we're going to have a turnover if they don't get the yardage required to get a first down. Either way, we're going to have a clock stoppage on this play. So all officials should be giving the stop the clock signal at the end of this play because either way, we're stopping the clock no matter what. It's one fourth down. And we see good situational awareness here by the crew. We can see our four officials coming in right here, all giving the stop the clock signal because, like I said, we had a fourth down play. Either way, clock's going to stop either for the first down or the change of possession. Good job here. Good mechanics. Looks good. Play here, we're going to look at some great hustle by the umpire. A great job by the umpire of highlighted inside the circle. Um, I, I saw this and I wanted to give a shout out to the umpire who, who uh, did a good job on this play. So we're going to see he's on the far hash. The play comes to the near sideline outside the near hash. The umpire comes across the field at the end of the play. You know, we always need to get a ball. You can see him here getting his arms up in the air, hands up in the air, identifying himself to the ball personnel to say, you know, Give me the ball. And then we're going to see him hustle back across the field to the far hash uh, to get the ball spotted. So great hustle here. Great mobility by the umpire. Great job of, you know, coming to get the ball and then getting back over to get it spotted for the next play. Awesome job. Great shout out here to the umpire on this play. Good job. Great hustle. Makes you look better. All right, thanks, everyone. That's week 11 uh, completed plays for this week. Another week of great plays. Another week of hopefully you've picked up some new officiating mechanic skills, rules, knowledge, or so forth to improve yourself for the upcoming games. Everyone have a great week. Have a great game this Friday. Take care. And until next time, please hit the like, subscribe button, or comment if you feel free. Take care.